We always want our games to play differently from each other. And if I were to describe how MK1 plays compared to the previous games, I say we loosened up restrictions. We really loosen things up. And so we're just going to the player here. Here's a, here's a, 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 a sandbox full of, of toys with combos and adding air combos, adding cameo characters and seeing what can you do with it. We didn't want to like start a whole new thing and, and have brand new characters where everybody wants to see Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Raiden, Liu Kang, you know, return. So we, we felt like, like telling a new story with existing characters was like the, the strongest way to go. But they're going to be reintroduced with brand new identities, backstories, roles, relationships with each other. And that is basically the premise. It's, it's a brand new story using characters that you already know and love, but in completely different scenarios, so they're gonna be reintroduced and all that. At the end of MK11, as you know, Liu Kang was kind of made the fire god, and he eventually became the keeper of all things, you know, the ultimate being, and so he created a brand new universe, you know, created a new Big Bang, basically was trying to restart everything with the hopes that everything was gonna turn out better than the previous timeline of Mortal Kombat. Liu Kang's biggest difference is he has a much wider range of projectiles, fire projectiles. You know, like a standard one, if you look, it's like a, a very tight, like yin-yang that's spinning, that's on fire. He has his, a ground one that's like a snake, right? He has uh, this gigantic one that he follows up with a, with a flying kick. And then he has an, uh, an aerial one that shoots like, you know, six or seven fireballs. If you catch somebody, you're gonna, you're gonna be juggling them with a number of hits. So his is a lot wilder. He's still very accessible, but it's his projectiles taken to an 11. Sub-Zero has some recognizable stuff, but then he also has uh, a few tricks up his sleeves, right? Like, like he has his clone, but now there's a version of this clone where he can do three of them really creating like a, a wall of ice that the opponent is going to have to kind of figure their way through. He has his, his classics like his, his slide, his projectile and, and all that, but um, the big kind of crazy clone thing is, is the one that kind of stands out the most from my perspective. Kenshi, his big emphasis with this game is the spirit that he can control. It's imagined like it's this ghost that also has a sword and the ghost can come flying from the ceiling out of Kenshi the ghost can jump out and kind of like stand around and fight and the player can control the ghost independently, right? And have him, you know, go do the dirty work and all that. So it's, I, I, I think Kenji is one of the more sophisticated characters in the game. You know, this, you, he's gonna need some practice getting in there. Um, but in addition to that ghost, he's gonna have a cameo character. So in a sense, the player's gonna be kind of thinking about three characters that they're uh, responsible for. Uh, Katana's changed her, the function of her fans is pretty, uh, pretty dramatically different. Um, normally, they, they behave as projectiles. You know, they hit you, they do damage. Now they kind of like circle around you, lift you up, set you up for combos. They have a lot wilder paths that they take as opposed to kind of just straightforward or something. You know, there's all these curves and and they're they're more versatile, I think, than than they were before. But like her fans have a very different property that she has. I think whenever you add a new, you know, mechanic into a, a, a fighting thing, there's there's challenges that come with it. How does it play with the existing things that we had? You know, we wanted some amount some some amount of familiarity, but also a simplicity to it. Uh, cameos started as a completely different uh, feature. Our, our design team wanted to have individual things like a like a, a drone for Sonya or like kind of like we had the, the cat with Atrocitus in, uh, in, in Injustice 2. Uh, basically something that would come out and kind of help you and I was pushing for everything needs to be used by everyone right we didn't want to just have the drone for Sonya we wanted to have the drone for everybody right and I also wanted to have more of a um, like like a novelty with our old old games and and so that kind of turned into characters that would come out and help you and then, and the fact that we we can kind of we have Mortal Kombat has about a hundred characters that, you know that we can dig 
uh, dig from and, and, and include in the game. So that really, once we started going, okay, it's two rosters, it's the main roster and then the cameo uh, roster, that really took a life on, of its own. And so when we started characters coming, jumping out and helping, that was great. We didn't want to go full tag because it was a great feature in MK9, but it wasn't the most used feature, right? And, and I think at the end of the day, it was because players would have to learn two full characters, right, completely. So we just used this utility. So now you like Kung Lao's teleport? Grab his cameo and he'll grab you and teleport with you, you know? You like Jax's ground pound, you like Kano's ball, you like all, all those um, iconic moves, right? You can take along with you if you like playing Scorpion, if you like playing Sub-Zero, right? And so there's, there's uh, those mixing and matching, I think is there's, there's something really special going on with that. I feel like Mortal Kombat has always kind of taken the approach of less challenging input requirements to, to, to make a move come out. You know, that, that, that goes all the way back to the first Mortal Kombat where Liu Kang was a lot of, you know, tap, tap, high punch, tap, tap, low punch, you know. A lot more people can do that than a dragon punch, you know, yeah, or two circles for Zangief's, uh, you know, and um, so so we've always kind of rested in that in that space of easier control. So I don't think we needed to go too much uh, easier with our controls, um, and uh, and certainly our new feature, the cameo system. And, you know, it's a button basically that you push. You know, and maybe you go towards and away stuff like that. So it's anybody can bring a cameo character out without being challenged. Uh, you know, technically, in terms of input. Yeah, we're, we're always talking about guest characters. You know, the, the, the process of getting a guest character isn't just us going, oh, it would be cool to have Freddy in it, and then he's in the game. There's owners of the IP, and there's, there's all these other, uh, you know, requirements kind of that we got to kind of check, uh, check boxes th uh, through. So we're always in a state of exploring numerous, uh, uh, you know, guest characters. Some, some make their way through, some get, you know, hit, hit a hiccup or a snag or some, some legal thing that, that, you know, doesn't, pre that prevents us from doing it. So we always have eight or nine plates spinning that we're, you know, hoping that who comes, who who calls, uh, kind of makes it through all the way. So.